All right, hey everybody, it's Jonathan, just coming on camera. Wanted to say, before we begin this Q&A, that we really appreciate the questions, but above all else, we just always appreciate the fans. They've been speaking out a lot about how much the show means to them, and we're hoping to just keep at it with more episodes and somewhat of a more consistent schedule of output. We know that there's been a lot of delays. I don't think we've ever had a real consistent schedule. But we're hoping to remedy that and just put out a show that people enjoy and that Brian and I continue to enjoy producing. Uh, we're always open to ideas and suggestions. For simplicity and for ease in editing, we're going to stick to my avatar. Brian is here as well answering your questions. I just got to say though, this was fun to put together and hopefully if we ever have another third volume of questions and answers, we have even more interesting discussions that we can put together. So, once again, thank you to the fans. Thank you, Brian, for putting up with me for five years now. And hopefully this can keep going. Why did you create the San Juan series? Well, a lot of me wants to say because I could, but... The idea kind of was to portray the train shows a little more seriously, more in line with the film and TV shows I'd grown up watching. I was a kid of the late 90s and early 2000s. Honestly, I could sum up the show with one simple mission, to tell the train series without using narration, especially because narration in kids' shows has a tendency to sort of over-explain. I realize part of it is that they write the show to be understandable in the script, and then the problem is because a lot of this is a visual story, you can kind of tell what's going on, and then you're told what's going on. And that's something I set out to avoid. But above all, it was just to do a different take on the Train series, at least in my mind. And I think we've done a pretty good job with that. So, when did the idea for San Juan Branch Line come around? That was all the way back in 2008. Uh, back in that time, I had a lousy computer that could barely even play the game at low quality, and was using a mini DV camcorder to capture the footage off the computer screen, which meant having to do everything really quiet and sort of at an angle. So, things are a lot easier now. It was also just, you know, from watching other people doing their shows and deciding, okay, why the hell not? What was the primary inspiration for the series? The irony, as I'll point out, is that uh, it was hearing about some of the really lousy episodes that were coming out of Thomas the Tank Engine and trying to both portray them more accurately, or rather realistically, and how it would carry out if it was done in our world. Although, I don't think that mission is a thing anymore. It was usually a mix between our world, the story world, and usually commenting on something in the game, or in reality. Why did I use Prowler's Old San Juan West route for the series? I'll be honest, it's because my computer had crashed the day before, and that was the only route that was working. There was another route in mind to be using for the series, and that one didn't come to fruition properly. In fact, it alone is why several engines were used the way they were. As I found, it's San Juan West has actually worked pretty nicely. It's a nice little circular route, and you have the benefit of trains interacting and also being spread out. How did Brian and I end up working together? Well, I had sort of been inclined to bring the show back. This was back in 2015 that I had wanted to do that. And around the same time, Brian did his Q&A video, his 11-11 subscribers. And I thought, oh, okay, Brian actually would be the perfect choice. So I pitched the idea to him that summer, and we spent the next month working on the Halloween episode, and it came together adequately. And then the Christmas episode, the script had already been written several years earlier, mostly for fun. So that was nice to finally get back together. But after that, the next year was the challenge of actually writing new episodes. And, well, it wasn't easy. Writing never is easy. But that was a fun year. Would I consider adding Locomotive XYZ? 
Uh, possibly. Um, it's possible. We try not to get too rigid with how we do things. What are my thoughts on when the San Juan branch line first relaunching? It actually felt pretty exciting. We are bringing back something old and making it new. And most importantly, just holding to our ideas. And I think it's worked out pretty nicely. What do we feel about the series from the first ever episode until now? Well, it's definitely a step up in quality. I would say the show now has a more has a more flexible idea of storytelling. We are free to tell a lot more ideas on different routes and use a bigger variety of characters. So the first episode still holds in my view, but yeah, we need to go back to some of the old ones and update them someday. Was there an earlier draft of the San Juan branch line? Um, I think that's referring to the route. And yeah, Brian has updated it pretty nicely. Now it looks like it fits in with the current game. Considering all I did with the route, it was pretty good for its time in Train Simulator 12. Now that we're in Train's a new era, looking at TRS-19 in the near future, the route was given another facelift by our friend Amtrak Guy 365 His attention to detail is a lot better and allows for a lot more easter egg potential when filming. In due time, other routes will be getting the same treatment. If we're talking about story, there really hasn't been much of a story. We're just sort of going with the idea that the trains are explicitly technology, and that provides some interesting ideas at how they work. Is the route you use to film San Juan all one route or multiple routes? Yes, the main route is the old San Juan West layout by Prowler901. The routes that represent <coughs> San Juan East and the interchange at Trinidad, Colorado are their own separate modules. Do we ever plan to release the map as shown uh, that one, it's been kind of weird because it's not our creation. One of these days I should ask Prowler if he do if he has any issue with us putting it out there. But until then, it's partially just letting it be on its own. Why did we choose Ellis to be what he is? Um, you guys do realize that I sponsored that model to be built. Honestly, I thought it would be kind of funny. There's also a lot of practicality that goes into selecting the roster, which works around what jobs there are to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Switching is handling by Ben and Grant, both at Junction City and the mine respectively. Annie and Sydney are on passenger service, Dan, Anthony, and Kent with moderate freight service, and Wes and Ellis on heavy freight. The same philosophy applies to Craig, Frank, and Nathan. How do we pick the right voice actors? It's usually a mix of who we think would fit and who is available. In fact, we regularly have people volunteer to do voices, and kind of the idea is because these are technologically imperfect models, it's okay for them to sometimes not have the greatest quality voice actor. That's, uh, that's the excuse I'll go with anyway. Will we have another episode revolving around Sydney? Yes. What happened to the old Milwaukee and UP coaches that were used for the Limited? Trainmaster rotates the consists every... Honestly, he does it multiple times a year anyway. Are we planning to upgrade Ben's model? If it works, certainly. How long does it take to make an entire episode? Usually the writing process is a month or so. Usually a lot of sitting around and trying to figure out how we're going to put this together. Brian is quicker with filming and editing. Usually takes him about a month or so. Episodes that are smaller in scope, like A Fruitless Search and Mike Could Do About Nothing, can take about seven calendar days to film once everything is set up. Moon Railer took almost two months because of how labor-intensive certain scenes were. For what it's worth, I experimented with filming an updated version of our first ever episode, Power Were Needed Most, and that took me less than an hour from beginning to end. If you watch how that episode was laid out, you could kind of see why we thought early on that this was going to be an easy side gig for us. So... The process is about two or three months, and usually a month of cooldown. Also, under normal circumstance, we have lives that, you know, usually get in the way. How did Ellis, a Reading T1, wind up on the San Juan Railroad? 
he was available. At that point in time, he was sitting in the East Coast waiting for something to do, and Trainmaster offered. What decade is the show set in? We have a moving timeline. Keep in mind, trains don't age, at least physically. So the idea is that the show looks just as much like it was shot in the 60s as it was shot today. Or it's always technically today. The, we don't put dates on the screen because we don't want to accidentally lock in our continuity. It's sort of a more general sense of, oh, it's the late 60s or the late 70s, 1980s, that kind of thing. So unless it's explicitly stated, it's unknown when precisely each episode would have taken place. The biggest hints that we give are pop culture references, and more directly, the road names and paint schemes that appear on freight cars and diesels. For example, Crummy Luck is a dead giveaway for being in the mid-80s, most notably because of the passing of the caboose in the Class 1 world. It's further accentuated with the ATSF diesels wearing the short-lived Kodachrome colors, created in anticipation of a merger with the Southern Pacific that ultimately fell through. We're sort of in the 90s now, but there's a good chance we'll jump around a bit. Is Blue Sky Mine a Midnight Oil reference? Well, it's the default name for the mine in the game, so who knows, it could be. For what it's worth, both Midnight Oil and Trains were created in Australia, so I imagine the irony isn't lost on the creators. What happened to the original voices of the characters? A lot of them are still around. Some actors, they just switch them out because they're not available and it becomes an issue. So it's like, alright, we... We need voices. How did you get the Wilson there to voice his train expert? We asked nicely. What was our favorite episode to work on? Yeah, I'm still partial to Saddled with Limits just because that's the episode that feels the most like a proper TV show episode. You know, it has a proper arc, that kind of thing. Without wishing to sound biased, Crummy Luck was probably the one that I enjoyed writing and filming. It allowed me to explore some thought-provoking territory, with the trend of retiring cabooses, and filming certain sequences reminded me of past videos that I used to enjoy making. Who is our favorite of the trio, Craig, Frank, or Nathan? It's usually the one we're writing. Same. Who is your favorite character to write for? I'll admit it's Ben, but Ben is allowed to reference the fact that the show is a show. Everybody else is sort of locked into thinking that it's still normal. The most I've contributed as far as dialogue is in Ellis. He's given me the open window to throw in all of my fascination with British culture, and that's something that I enjoy greatly. Where's the crossover? Progress unfortunately has been very slow. The first episode has been scripted and filmed, it's just a matter of getting the character lines in. If anything changes in my plans regarding the crossover, I'll make some kind of post about it, so sorry about that. Will we cross over with Steam Nation? What is Steam Nation? I'm not against any crossover, but generally they're gonna have to approach us. Is there any storyline that we're planning to add? Uh huh huh huh. Maybe. Don't worry, we got it covered. If San Juan Branch Line was offered to be a Red series, would we take the opportunity? If we were offered to be a premium show, then yes, I certainly would. I would try to get some more writers. Will we add more characters to the San Juan series? Yes. Will we be making more episodes? We're not planning to stop anytime soon. Will there be any visiting steam engines? Possibly. When did the crossover for San Juan and Marysville come about? That's been around for about a year or so. I kind of wish we had had a script ready before it was confirmed. But otherwise, I think we're all on board with making it happen. Will there ever be in-universe stories about other railroads outside San Juan? Well, that's more like an anthology, and Brian and I have had ideas, but why limit ourselves to be outside of it being the same show. Will there ever be merch? I'm not against it. If we ever get enough buyers to justify the cost in making them, sure. What was the most difficult episode to make? I know it's not technically, but the 
knockoff and low quality one because we were trying to actually have a proper story setting it up all these dumb jokes in the first half to pay off in the second half that is the only episode i can recall feeling stressed out over trying to make it make sense especially because it had to be a multi-parter moon railer in the early days of making this series there were a lot of new things that i was still learning about setting up and staging shots that were very stressful and time consuming that coincidentally coincided with an even more stressful time in my personal life that made this so aggravating and labor-intensive to finish. I am, however, very proud of the finished result. How many episodes are we planning to be remastered? Eventually we're going to have to do all four. We're sort of wondering how to do that. We don't want it to just be scene for scene, line for line. We actually want to try to give it a more substantial story. It'll happen eventually. What inspired us to make a YouTube channel? Well, you need a place to put up your videos. We wanted a more dedicated and advertiser-friendly channel, and that's what High Iron is for, because San Juan generally is advertiser-friendly, and once we took out all the copyrighted music, suddenly, yeah, we could do whatever we wanted. We still can't swear, though. Out of all the videos we've done for High Iron, which one has been the favorite? Well, obviously it's crummy luck, but... I admit, this is more Brian's channel than mine. Generally, it's the ones I look back on with fond memories of. You might think that it's full steam ahead jubilation, because it's something I had always wanted to do for years and was one that I put all my heart and soul into. But it got tripped up by a couple of things. One was an audio glitch that cancelled out the audio effects on certain clips, and also the live premiere chat getting hijacked by spammers. Way to cap off something I was dead set on making my best effort, guys. The correct version is available through the Vimeo page linked below, if anybody's curious. So as far as favorites go, the Burlington Northern tribute tops off that list because of how all the content just came together, and how much I learned about Big Nothing's significance. An alternative answer would be the video I'm releasing next. Any plans for another Full Steam Ahead episode? Yep, got one in the works right now. Do we know why the creator of Full Bucket Nears closed his account? Nope. No. Are we planning to do more video editorials? I'm all for it. We've had a couple we've wanted to do about certain tourist lines. What about a video editorial about the commuter railroads in the San Francisco Bay Area, like with the surf line? If I have enough material to work with, sure. Could we make a history video of Northern Pacific? I'm sure it's NP. Will you ever do anything on the NEC? I could. Are you planning to make a Southern Pacific history video? I could. What steam locomotive class do you consider to be your favorite? I already talked about it, but... New York Central Hudson. I don't really play favorites. I generally will answer with my standard non-answer. The one I'm filming. What is the best thing you've ever caught while rail fanning? Whatever it is I'm filming. What are our thoughts on the East Broadtop coming back? Oh, that's something I never thought would happen. It only figures that they'd come back during the apocalypse. I am certainly excited and happy to see East Broadtop return. I can't believe it's been 10 years since they stopped. So I will certainly be there whenever Steam comes back, hopefully next year. What are your thoughts on Santa Fe 3751 coming into service this year? I'm excited for it. I mean, yeah, of course I'm excited. I believe 3751 is the most notable Steam engine I still haven't seen in action. Technically, there's SP and S700, but... When did it ever do anything major in this last decade? What's our favorite Santa Fe locomotive? I kind of like those prairies. For me, it's the 3700 class mountains. Diesel-wise, the FP45. What is your opinion on TVRM? It's pretty alright. Yeah, there's certainly a good operation there. Lots of... You certainly can't deny, like, the steam, the diesel, especially the passenger cars. Like, that's... A collection that many people could be envious of. A lot of it certainly helps that the route is so short that they can focus on the collection. Do you have model trains? No! I had to, at one point, decide between model trains and real trains. And the real stuff won out, if only because I don't have to store them in my basement. What are your thoughts on Mount Rainier Scenic Railroad shutting down and the possibility of the engines being left to rust again? I seriously doubt they'll just leave the equipment to rust willy-nilly. As long as there are people out there willing to fight for the future, 
Whether it's for the good of the railroad, or for the equipment, their future will always be secure. And I do hope the railroad pulls through this in some shape or form. Mount Rainier has, is not a money maker in the same way as Durango or Great Smoky Mountains. It's more of a back and forth small tourist hub. So I think it just was inevitable that things wouldn't work out. Hopefully they find new owners who understand this and can treat it a bit more as a volunteer and, you know, laid back kind of place. Of course, I'm not really an expert, so whatever my opinion means. But uh, whatever issues they were having before have just been exacerbated by now. And I would imagine in a year or so we'll learn something. What are your thoughts on the Durango and Silverton converting to oil? I'm okay with it. Would you rather no trains are running? I am besides, you'd still have Cumbrace to go to if coal is really a deal breaker. What are your opinions on battery electric locomotives developed by GE? Or Webtech, rather. I'm watching that pretty closely. Fingers are crossed that this can change the motive power industry. Whatever turns you on. It's fine. Favorite whistle? Okay, oh, that's a loaded question. I've noticed my favoritism towards deeper whistles, but otherwise, again, it's the one I'm listening to. Same. What is the smallest railroad you've ever visited? If we're talking rideable railroads, the Mid-South Life Steamers. Smallest railroad you've visited, I believe that's Bucks Gehuda. That's only about three miles of two-foot gauge. Actually, I don't even, I don't know how big it is. Favorite international steam locomotive. Now that one's interesting because I have not seen anything international. No, I legit don't have an answer to this. They're all just... Like, they're all kind of... International engines are all kind of neat, and I don't like playing favorites. The SNCF 231 Pacific. Lionel or American Flyer? I mean, let's just go with Lionel. Just don't go on their Facebook group. While Lionel is what I grew up with, I can see some perks of American Flyer's creativity, especially with his accessories. What is your opinion on the Southern Pacific MT4 Mountains? They're actually my favorite SP steamer. I'm quite fond of them. Narrow gauge or standard gauge? Once again, the one I'm filming. Standard gauge is more ubiquitous, but narrow gauge has a charm that just can't be matched. But, I mean, I'll film anything as long as I can get to it. What's your favorite steam locomotive, either narrow or standard gauge? Standard, we already know. Narrow? I'm inclined to say any of the main two-footers. No specific one, though. I just find the whole network to be captivating. What is your favorite excursion steam locomotive? In a few years, hopefully, that'll be 576. For right now, it's 765. I will be honest, I am partial towards 765 and 261, but that's just because of childhood nostalgia. What would have happened if SP and Santa Fe had merged successfully? Probably about the same as we saw. Probably something like UP would have merged with BN or merged with Chicago and Northwestern sooner. Because the railway mergers were just going to keep happening until, you know, there was nothing left to merge with. Pretty sure that would have created some issues with federal transportation regulators. That's something I might say for an editorial down the line. If we could bring back a discontinued Amtrak train name, what would it be? Let's just go with Super Chief. I know it's basically the route they use, but come on. The Floridian, between Chicago and Miami. No, not for the novelty of having Amtrak through my home city, although I make excellent use of it. But the Midwest of Florida segment is a missing part of Amtrak's key demographic, and is one I bet would produce a lot of patronage. Of course, the easier method would be to extend the current City of New Orleans route along the Gulf Coast to at least Jacksonville, and that would cover a market segment missing for over a decade. If you could bring back a passenger train that never lived to see Amtrak, which one would it be? The Southern Railway's Asheville Special between Salisbury, North Carolina and its namesake city. Pretty sure that NC Dutt has been <coughs> planning on extending that way for a long time, though. What is your favorite early and modern diesel from EMD, GE, Alco, Fairbanks, Morse, etc.? For a list that diverse, maybe I should condense it into a top 10 list. Uh, I certainly like the E's and F's. I mean, guys, I don't particularly have favorites. What is your thought on classic diesels? They're pretty alright. What's not to like about them? Like, I don't film freight stuff, but that's just because waiting for action doesn't interest me anymore. 
So if I can find a tourist line running a nice Alco diesel or F unit or a switcher, certainly something rare, like, yeah, I'm not going to have any issue. I'll notice I drive farther to see steam engines, but if there's a diesel train on the way I can get to, then yeah, why not? What's your thoughts on Reading 1187 being bought by the Age of Steam Roundhouse? Good for them! Well, at least it'll finally be indoors. Thoughts on Nickel Plate 765? Yep, I have a lot of respect for the operation and what they've done with the locomotive. What's my thoughts on PSR? The results will show over time. I am not a railroading expert, though. And I don't follow modern stuff all that well. You gonna go on more excursions in 2021 after so far what's happened in 2020? Yeah, why wouldn't we? I admit I don't ride a lot of trips because I prefer to document, especially because a lot of them you can't even stand at a vestibule. But I will continue to do what I can whenever that happens again. What do you like other than trains? Well, lots of things, honestly. Filmmaking, writing stories, music, traveling, learning about history and science, and other modes of transportation like cars, boats, and even planes. Aside from filming, I do a lot of writing and uh, channeling a lot of animation. I also have a lot of, have had success with selling stuff online as an online retailer through eBay and uh, materials. I also spend a lot of time with the dog, if you hadn't guessed. What is your favorite food? Uh, wow. You know, I've never had an answer for this question either. Favorite type of food, though, if I could answer that, that would probably fall under spicy. These days, I don't really have much of a preference, largely because I don't think about this type of thing. What animated film should be remade, and which ones shouldn't? I've always said that if we're going to continue this remake trend, let's do ones that weren't that good to begin with, like Black Cauldron. Ones that should not be remade, well, uh, anything that's going to be shot for shot, not really for. You can make a good movie or story out of bad or dubious material. You can also do vice versa. But uh, I am not against remakes. It's just a lot of them are a little too lazy and dependent on the original. Or making a story from a book or a comic, even. It's just that, yeah, you, it's pretty straightforward, but you can do something else or better. Don't just stop at 100% in quality. That's a way to do it. Of course, it helps when you're getting paid. I admit that this is more of John's area of expertise, because he's a lot more fluid in film than I am. As far as animated classics go, the one I'd personally go for is Richard Williams' The Thief and the Cobbler. You might find the legacy it left to be intriguing. And that is how we do that. Sorry about this being a little subdued compared to last time, but this way it was just a lot easier on us. Anyone who spent the majority of their lives video making know that this is not, and never has been, an easy job. But it's one that me and John take great pride in, and we're certainly glad that more than 2,000 of you are liking what we're putting out. As long as we have that ability to make great content for you guys, we'll always be in our stride. Thank you all for watching. I gotta train the catch.